welcome to a special live, lively, live recorded version of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. We have first. never, ever done this before. We've taken stuff we recorded live and put it on the podcast feed. We have not intentionally taken podcast and brought it into the live feed. That's true. I was thinking of Whistlekick Live that Gabe helped to yeah, set up for the which, year. Which, honestly, it was the 18, we did 18, 18 episodes. The 18 episodes that, that Gabe and I did that have led into us doing this episode today. So if you are listening or watching later, please know we're going to have a little bit of a longer intro than we typically do mm -hmm. because we want to give people time to get here. We didn't set this ahead we weren't quite sure exactly when we were going to go live and instead of trying to uh fight for a timetable that we mm -hmm. didn't have we thought you know what let's just let's just do it and if people can join they can join awesome and it does look like some people are popping up in the feed so that's pretty cool happy for that hello joe, joe. how are you my friend uh hopefully i'm gonna see you this saturday fingers crossed okay um, what are our normal intro stuff? Let's do our normal intro sure, stuff. Sure, do, you, sure. do you want to try it? Oh gosh, no. <laughs> no, no, passing that one off. You're gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna take the ball and run with it. Okay. All right. So let's go over all the things that we do here at Whistlekit. Well, not even all of them. Most of them go There's to no way we can hit all no, of them. No, because I, I honestly forget. Go to whistlekick.com. And that's where you're going to find the roots of everything. We bring everything back to there, whether it's whistlekickprograms.com, uh, whether it's our social media, our blog, <clears throat> virtual journal, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, uh, black belt social media, uh, first cup, like it's so much, stuff. all the books, tons of stuff. But there is a store, and in the store, you can get stuff like your hat, my sweatshirt. Um, I should have planned ahead and had a whistle kick mug to drink my coffee out of, but I didn't. You can get the mug. If you use the code podcast one, five, you get 15% off all that stuff. Except when you're silly like me and forget. So when I bought my hat, I forgot to use the code podcast 15. So it just meant I paid full price, but. Well, fortunately it's not a really expensive hat. That's fair. So that 15% yeah, was that's a few fair. dollars. Yeah. That's not a big deal. Okay. It's okay. Uh, other housekeeping -y intro things. If you are watching this live, we encourage you to interact with the show. I we're, can see what you're trying right right to there. figure all this out. We're only doing this one on Facebook. We do do first cup on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. But mm -hmm. again, we got to start slow. Uh, the plan is that we will keep doing these live probably once a month. Mm -hmm. okay. And if you've got feedback, Jeremy at whistlekick.com, Andrew at whistlekick, martial arts radio .com. Yeah. I think that's a solid intro. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. not bad. You know, All right. Maybe not starts, my best. Starts to, you know, set, set yeah. the mood a little here and what yeah. we're doing. <laughs> All right. Uh, now it's a Q&A episode. It is a Q&A. So there's some cues, and I'm going to A them. I have some cues right here. For me to A. Yeah. I, sounds thought, so inappropriate. Yeah. Then maybe we find something <laughs> else there. Um, so we mentioned it, the, it in the beginning, the mm. intro that, uh, you know, Gabe was pretty instrumental in just the, how this is going to, was going to work, right? Undoubtedly. For sure. Uh, the first question is from Gabe. Yay. So that's pretty cool. Hey Gabe. Uh, so Love here we go. Guy. Here's the first question of our Q and A. We got okay. our, you guys, uh, audience, you can't see it down here, but I've got a timer. So we're giving you just five minutes. Yeah, five minutes. <sighs> All right. Good questions. From Gabe. The question is. You've talked about students needing to take a break from training. Mm. What does it look like for an instructor to take a break? We can slice this too. Um, an instructor taking a break from instructing, mm -hmm. an instructor taking a break from training entirely. Which does do you, does he, he mean? He doesn't give okay. uh, a distinction. My guess would be from instructing. Okay. And, and that's what I would guess mm -hmm. as well. Anybody who has put their heart into anything knows that you need time to recharge. And the average martial arts instructor runs multiple classes per week. They don't get to train on their own as much as they would like to. Uh, most of them, by numbers, in my experience, have some other job 
you know, usually like a full-time job and they teach martial arts a couple times a week. Um, they're probably, they've got family, friends. They probably have a hobby outside martial arts. It doesn't leave a lot of time. It doesn't leave a lot of time to step in and be passionate and give everything that you are and have to your students. And if you do it for a while, you tend to burn out. And I've trained with instructors who have burned out. Mm -hmm. And maybe more importantly, I've been an instructor who's burned out. I had a school for a couple of years. I loved it. I threw everything I was at those students and they progressed rapidly. It was awesome to see. I was so proud of them. And I was proud of my ability to help them on their journey. But I noticed about 18 months in that the other things going on in my life were just robbing that energy. And just the fact that my karate classes were at the end of the day, mm -hmm. everything else came first, literally. So I'd step into class and I was drained when I got there. Now, there are times, most of us have experienced this, where you step into training and you're drained and you feel invigorated from class. And that would still happen from time to time, but it wasn't every time. Yeah. So what does it look like? What it looks like, it depends wildly on whether it's temporary or permanent. And my recommendation is always that it's temporary before it's permanent. There are times where, you know what? If I take two weeks off here, you know, cancel this two, these two classes or whatever, I can have like a week and a half. It's kind of the way people play their uh, vacation time mm -hmm. at like a full-time job, job, you know, where, where holidays mm -hmm. work, in, right? Like you can do something like that. But I think it's important then to find what is going to sustain you so you can come back to it. I'm always sad when an instructor feels burned out and they, they just stop. And it usually comes down to an imbalance in what they're putting in versus what they're getting back. And if they feel sustained in the rest of their life, it's probably because they're not putting a priority on their own training. Hmm. Interesting. Which means you've got to hit seminars. You've got to go train with somebody else. You've got to make time with your instructor. You've got to do whatever you can do. And here, here's the lowest hanging fruit. I'm going to open the school on Thursdays from seven to eight. I'm going to focus on my own training. I would love other people to come in and focus on their own training. Mm -hmm. So I have other people around so I can't be lazy about it yep. because most of us do better in a class environment for that reason. Yeah, very true. Very true. Um, I've known instructors who have only taught and they, they did, they taught more than just kids. They taught adult classes too, but they only taught during the school year. Mm. They took the summer off. <clears throat> It's a difficult business model, but yep. it, it's it's an option. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Cool. Um, people watching or listening mm -hmm. might want to help support the show. Hopefully they do. Hopefully you like what we do. Hopefully. If you're still watching or listening, you probably at least tolerate what we do. Right now we have a couple couple watching. Hey, what's up, people watching live? Um the, one of the, the ways they can help support us was through our Patreon. Patreon. Yeah. Uh, Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. We've put a lot of resources into that over the years. Year and a half, I think that that's been running. Maybe two. Something like Time that. is fuzzy for me. When it started, it was like, okay, here are all these things that we're going to do. Jump in and pick your, your tier. It goes from $2 to $100 a month that you can pick. And we have people at every tier. Mm-hmm. Not many of them at the hundred dollar mark because if we did, then we would make a bunch of money. But it's not a lot of people there. <laughs> We're not shout, profitable. Shout yet. out to the people who are <laughs> contributing. The second iteration of Patreon was when I realized that the the printing partner we used, the one that made that hat, the one that made the sweatshirt, was also tied in to Patreon for merch. Mm -hmm. So I could go in and I could take these designs and it's just automatic. You know, after X period of time at this tier, you get this thing. And so I, I dug in and really came to understand the platform and said, okay, at this tier, at this tier, here, we're, it's done. Boom. Exclusive designs offered once. And I, it's already on my calendar. Like the day I set this out, I set an appointment on my calendar for almost a year out to revise them all. So there was zero risk that someone would get the same thing over again. Oh, cool. Yeah, that was pretty important to me. That is pretty cool. So just yesterday, 
I received an email from PayPal. I, I, I am also a Patreon, subscri Patreon subscriber, even though I'm a host of co-host of the show. I still pay. To the it podcast. may not make sense, but the, the takeaway is that Andrew values what we do Absolutely. above and beyond what he does. Absolutely. Well, by far and away, uh, I value the show and what it brings to the community. And as a Patreon subscriber, just yesterday, because it was November 1st, I got an email mm -hmm. saying, uh, hey, be on the lookout. Here's your, he, This is the address we have on file. Is this correct? Mm -hmm. Because we're going to send you something. Something? I what could it be? I have no idea. I don't either. The first month, I don't remember. I did the, all these months the ago. The first month, there's a sticker. I got a free whistle kick sticker just for being a – it didn't cost me anything extra. It was just – free so i have no idea what's coming later on this month as being a patreon subscriber from what i remember of what i did in each tier um it's quarterly every three months you get a thing and then the fourth quarter it's a bigger thing oh, cool. to reward you for being around for a year yeah now it didn't look like there was a way i could do it where if you just kept going like so i could keep increasing mm -hmm. the value I've got to hit the reset button yeah. on that after a year. So we'll probably continue that, you know, so a sticker, um, you may get a different sticker. I I've sure. tried to, we do a lot of funky graphic design stuff. So yeah. I've tried to, I've tried to make sure. In fact, I'm thinking of one of them now. Um, I'm remembering all the time I put in tweaking that design because it came out. I wanted it to be super cool. And, you know, they're not like cheap stickers. They're like, yeah, nice no, they're really stickers. Good. Yeah. And, and, you know, at higher tiers, you know, there's there's shirts and hoodies and, and all kinds of stuff that people were contributing anyway. Honestly, why did I do it? It's the hope that people will stick around a little longer. Mm -hmm. right. Awesome. All right. So a couple people in the chat here. We've got uh, Craig Wareham. Hey, what's up, a, Craig? Giving up the thumbs up, which is great. Uh, and then Stacy. Uh, giving us some quick readings before she's going to run to a, a noon meeting. Nice. Uh, Thanks for joining. I, I let everybody know on First Cup um, today and I think yep. even over last week that this would be coming. And if you're going to be in the chat and you want to ask a question for the Q&A for Jeremy, please go ahead and send it in the chat. I yep. will, I'll will i go ahead and uh, and maybe I'll replace one of the ones I'm going to ask. So, or at the very least, we can, you know, we can run the clock a little bit longer. Sure. All right. So here's the next question. Uh, which, you know, Stacey's in the chat, so I'm going to ask Stacy's question. Let's do it. Uh, so question she asked a while ago for me to add to the list. Mm -hmm. How do you teach students to teach slash mentor and correct others as they advance? Mm -hmm. The simplest answer is by modeling the behavior that you want them to have. Right. We, um, we recorded an episode earlier talking about the, the culture of critique. Mm -hmm. within martial arts and the biggest challenge new mentors assistant instructors have is they get really bogged down in details and they because it comes from a good place they want everybody to do it right yeah you know and it's it's the best example i can give is it's somebody teaching a form and they're not even the person learning it hasn't even gotten to the end and they're adjusting their hand positioning and all this stuff it's out of order it's out of sequence if you leave people to their to fend for themselves working with others, it's not going to go well. You have to teach how to teach. Mm -hmm. Learning how to teach is a skill. It is not a skill that comes inherently in just learning material. I know math. Not going to make a great math teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know, I don't know, what's something else I know? I know how to write. I would be a terrible English teacher. Actually, that's not true. I might be a decent English teacher because the, the best English teachers I had just kind of like showed up and we read books. <laughs> I could do that part of it. But in terms of like a formal educator, I would need to go to school to learn how to educate. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that we take for granted in the martial arts in a way that we don't do it in other industries. We assume that if you know the material, you know how to teach the material and that's not the same. I am a firm believer that the moment you can put a couple things together, you should be involved in the education of other students. Mm -hmm. If you can get through the form, you can show somebody else the form. No, you're not going to be great at it. They're not going to be great at it. There's all kinds of places where you're going to teach the wrong thing. Guess what? I've taught the wrong thing as, as a 
black belt. Like mm -hmm. it's going to happen. Too. Me too. But if it's a skill, if teaching is a skill, you got to practice it. And that's one of the things that I think really enhances the culture of a school is you break things out and you let people share their information with others, generally lower rank, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Uh, some stuff in the chat here. Uh, Craig thought that was a great question. Shout I out. agree. It is he, a great question. He shouted out to Stacy that uh, that he appreciated that kind yeah. of question. Um, Stacy actually in the chat says, "I posed this as I've been doing a lot of work on mentoring and coaching mm -hmm. in professional settings, and a lot of those same sort of things carry over into the martial art world." Yeah, I I think I would start from the same place. And maybe that's because I, I see the world through a martial mm. arts mindset. You know, yeah. that's my context for life. But if I'm working with someone, you know, say someone on the team, you know, when I talk about the team, you know, you're part of the team, but there are quite a few people behind the scenes who work on things. And when I'm working with them, I'm giving them opportunities to screw up. Mm. I am holding them accountable. I'm pointing out what they did right and wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm cheering them on. I'm when the time is right, encouraging them to work together on things for someone to show someone else something. And I, I think all of those things are equally appropriate, though not necessarily in the same degree because yeah. the situation matters, yep. but in a non-martial arts setting. Yeah, perfect. Um, you want to transition into uh, talking about people reviewing the show? Yeah, yeah. So we were big on this early on. We are not as big on, have not been as big on it we need to be bigger on it now. There are three main places people can leave reviews. If you've not left us a review, it is the most impactful thing that you can do to help the show. Google reviews, Facebook reviews, Apple podcast reviews. Secondarily, if, if, you, if you really want to go deep, Spotify, Google podcasts, any podcast place, we don't care about Yelp. I will continually say that because Yelp is a terrible company with a horrible business model. <laughs> And our Yelp review probably just went to like negative or something now. That's okay. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do each time we do one of these is randomly pick a recent review. And that person can email me, Jeremy at whistlekick.com, and they will get a gift certificate to the whistlekick.com store. Just simple. Simple as that. So you help us out. You might win some stuff. You are not required to leave a five-star review. But... If you actually care about getting the gift, gift certificate, you probably think highly <laughs> of us. So you're probably going to leave a five-star review. Yeah. But, you know, for legal reasons, I can't say that you have to. Nope. Nope. Awesome. So let me read this one that I picked out. <clears throat> My laptop didn't shut off. Oh, it did. No, it didn't. Tommy uh, agrees. Yelp is horrible. Okay. Uh, so this is a review from... That wasn't the... <sighs> Go away. Go away. This wasn't the person who left the podcast re the review last time, was it? No. Okay, good. I don't believe so. Gosh, okay. I hope not. <laughs> In case they would, they would too. That would be funny. That would be funny, but I don't think so. Okay. The name the name's familiar, but maybe not for that. We'll reason. find out okay. later on this week. When, uh, when so Daniel Ham posted on Facebook, podcast is amazing. Love the different topics. The host was very responsive to my email and helped me find specific podcasts on the topic of getting back into martial arts. I have now jumped back in and enjoy listening to his podcast daily. Sweet. Thanks, Daniel. Email I mean, me. I'm and, also going to make a note to make sure that we don't read that one. Yeah, yeah. So we're figuring this stuff out, right? Like what you're getting with this episode is the rawest version of martial Absolutely. arts radio. And I think it's fun when we, you know, one of the things that we realized coming into this was we needed a little more planning on this stuff. Yeah. A little yeah. more accountability. And, and that's internally. okay. And who knows? It is entirely possible that, that, we that was the one we did last time. If it's that possible. was the one we did last time, then you know what? Um, that means that other people really fell down on the job. Yeah, yeah. and it it means that Daniel probably went across the whole arc of review sites and went. Yeah. So there you go. Okay. Okay. Question: You ready for question number three? Question three. Okay. So Stacy's question last. <laughs> That's not was... how you punch. Don't. <laughs> Stacy's question last was about mentoring. Yeah. And so I thought I'd follow that up with a question from Francis Cordon. Hello, Francis. Uh, yeah. He's become such a good friend. Yeah, absolutely. Great guy. I love it. Love his show. Yeah. Watch it on YouTube. Yeah. Um, his question also is about mentorship. Okay. Um, 
And then his question is, can you offer advice and martial arts mentorship to someone if they approach you for your experience, even if they practice something completely different in a different system and school? Yes. And how would that work? Depends. Okay. So the, the yes is easy because if, if, if I'm getting the, um, the out of mentorship versus actual instruction of technical material, I don't care what you do. I could mentor you. I can mentor a kid, right? Like what's the mm -hmm. job of a mentor to help foster growth? Mm -hmm. What's the job of martial arts instructor to help foster growth? If you train, I don't know, what's the most polar opposite of my skill set? It's probably like Wing Chun, mm -hmm. maybe Wushu. Probably, actually, Wushu is probably better. I can't teach you Wushu. I can't critique your Wushu. Mm -hmm. But I can encourage your training. I can hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. I can reflect back to you what you want me to watch out for. I could train you physically. I could spar with you. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that I could do. And I think if we're focused entirely on the correctness or accuracy of technical movement, I think we're missing the boat, right? For most of us, martial arts is more than just technique. It's about the personal growth. It's about the lifestyle. It's about the connections. It's about all these things. And if we look at those things, it works. And one of the things I like about stepping out of that a little bit is it means cross training can take on a different attitude. I long for a day where I can travel, walk into a random martial arts school of any kind, take a class, glean what I'm able to in that class and not be looked at as a complete weirdo. Because mm. let's face it, that is what would happen in most schools now. Mm. If I if I rolled up to a I don't know a wushu class, mm -hmm. never done wushu, the entire conversation would be about so you want to join the school and train here for a while. No, I just want to take a class. Mm -hmm. I just want to drop in. This is something that happens at gyms. It happens in a lot of other physical disciplines, um, and I think it builds goodwill. It's one of the things, so a lot of people know that uh, I, I was involved in CrossFit for a very long time. I'm not currently, whether or not I go back into that, I don't know. But one of the things I really appreciated about CrossFit is I could travel anywhere, drop into a CrossFit gym, mm -hmm. not know the people, not know the coaches. The movements were the same, which makes it a little bit easier, but the culture was celebratory of that. Hey, and we've got Jeremy visiting from Vermont today. Yep. yep. Hi, Jeremy. Hi. Mm -hmm. Cool. It was fun. I built friendships. I was once at a CrossFit competition and somebody was like, you're the guy without shoes. Because <laughs> I work out without shoes in pretty much every aspect of my life. <clears throat> Have I answered that? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think the other aspect that you're completely missing is mentorship doesn't have to just strictly be martial. Right. Marketing how your school runs and operates. Great That's huge, point. huge, huge Great point, point. That can be still be mentored regardless yeah. of what style you do. So, yeah. If someone ran, we'll keep down this path of Wushu, ran a Wushu school or wanted to run a Wushu school, I think I could do a pretty darn good job helping them get that off the ground, marketing, mm -hmm. business systems, et cetera. Yep. And, and a lot of, a lot of the programs that we have are style agnostic intentionally so you know and so uh let's talk a little bit about the the programs okay that, that might help help a school as a mentor yeah as well. yeah um so we have four core programs flex force fuel fast and that came as a result the names got rebranded if you've been around for a while they were called uh strength and conditioning uh speed development and flight conditioning and then we won't launch the flexibility program. And I didn't want to call it flexibility. And I just, but flex. one day I was like, flex, let's look at flex. And I was like, oh, I like that. And I was like, but these all kind of connect <gasps> puzzle pieces. And so I did the puzzle piece logos. Uh, I was pretty pumped on those. And I realized that the names were too long. Flex worked as a name. So mm -hmm. I was like, what could I call these? And the Fs were accidents. Once mm -hmm. I got, once three of them 
it made sense to start with F. So I was like, yeah. okay, I have to shoehorn the other one in. Is so I'll let people guess which of the you know it wasn't flex, but which of the other three was the one that got <laughs> shoehorned in as the fourth F. Four Fs. I give four Fs to you. One of them is free, uh, but the fast program. You know, a lot of my understanding of the body and how the body works came out of training and coaching CrossFit because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. unlike most traditional martial arts schools, the philosophy in that community is about science, research, latest. And I did a lot of testing on people I was coaching. I was like, try this, that didn't work. try this, try this. Oh, that worked. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mental note. <clears throat> and so when we put together these programs, specifically the FAST program, I needed to do something different because if I ask most martial arts instructors, how do I get faster? Well, just do a bunch of techniques as fast as you can until what point? Mm. Yep. Well, you know, just do a lot. Okay. So if I can go at, let's just pick a number. If I can go at a speed of 10 mm -hmm. and I want to get to 11 and I'm doing a whole bunch of tens and then I'm doing nine and then eight and then five, how does that help you get I've to I've actually conditioned my body to get slower yeah. because I put in more reps at that slower speed. Mm -hmm. And so the FAST program was all about how much load can people handle? It's a different amount. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the secret sauce in there is that the, the program allows enough individualization that you can get faster at any technique you want because the principles are the same. Mm -hmm. The training protocol is the same. You just plug in your own technique. Yes, one technique. And you will get faster. It does work. There awesome. are people out there using it. It is less expensive than you think. Whistlekickprograms.com. Awesome. Uh, Craig actually made a comment. In, oh, that's sad. Uh, Craig I made a comment about uh, the last question that Francis Ooh. Cordon gave. Uh, that he agrees. He agrees. He feels that uh, sometimes we often get bogged down in particulars of a system or style. Mentorship can come in many facets, mm -hmm. which is very true. There are always gems to be learned in the right partnership absolutely well said more. and and uh very unsurprising coming from someone who does such a great job mentoring people mm. well Craig said. is exceptional with that well said uh all right so you ready for our last question let's do it okay so this uh came from uh nish grout hey nish who uh i found out recently is cousins of a very good friend of mine yeah that's weird yeah very very but this weird. is what happens when you're from the northeast that's right. and uh nish we're not all inbred but we no. are all related um, he actually sent this this morning at 7:30. He said, "Hey, can you get this oh in the can you get this in the next Q and A?" And I said, "Yes, if you get it to me right now, I'll read it today." And so okay. here it is. Would you rather? <laughs> dot 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 dot. I've never had a "Would you rather" that wasn't woefully inappropriate. So I've, no, I'm, no, 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 this is I'm totally sure it's not. So I'm just. Okay. But that's where my mind, my mind. Would you rather have to fight a chicken every time you get in your car? or an average adult orangutan once a year? Oh. Welcome to Whistlecake Martial Arts Radio Q&A. How long do I have to fight the chicken? Is it to the death? Okay. Uh, win condition, one participant unconscious or unable to continue. Does fighting the chicken include throwing it out of the car? No. Win condition... Is one participant unconscious or unable to continue? Well, yeah, if they're not in the car, they can't continue, but I see your point. Um, I would end up with PTSD about the chicken. I think it would have to be the orangutan. Um, but they're monsters. Now, he... Put, I would have to come prepared. He put in that you would get a sword for the orangutan. Oh! I think that makes the... I think it makes it too... E I think that makes the decision too easy, so I chose to not read you that part. Um, orangutan with a sword, chicken with my hands. You know, chickens... Chickens can be brutal, man. Like, if this is like a trained chicken... Hey, chickens are easy to kick, though. Yeah, but if I'm in a car, how am I kicking a chicken? Every time you get in your car. Okay, that's right. The way I'm envisioning like I get in, in the car. You know, I get in, I shut the door, and now there's a chicken. Okay. And yeah, now I'm, I'm fighting yeah, okay. this. Well, it's probably more here. I'm fighting this chicken, and it's flapping, and it's just it's just a whole scene. Yeah. It's But I get in and out of my car a lot. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like the idea, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a car anymore. I'd be like, I'm just... 
I guess I'm not going to bring that to the post office. So, so you do well. That's when you just do all, everything online. I would have to. I would probably not have a car. Or you only drive your motorcycle. Mm. Why is Jeremy driving in the cold? Why is Jeremy so cold? Uh, something about a chicken. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that's that a was a great question. That was a, it was a, a good fun. one to end on. Yeah, I, I, I would probably lose to the orangutans. They are brutal. I, I think we probably all would. I don't know. With a sword, though. See, I think a sword makes it a lot easier of a decision well, to make. I, f- I, I could probably lop off a hand, and then it would probably be so freaked out it would run away. Yeah, probably. Yeah. We don't encourage this, though. We do not uh, subscribe to the abuse of animals. Agreed. Of any sort. For any reason. Okay. Okay. Is that the end? That was the last one. <laughs> we like to, I, like to end on, I like to end on fun ones. Fun or funny ones. I appreciate that. All right. Well, thanks for joining us for the first ever live Q&A episode. Is there anything in there you want? Uh, Tommy agrees. You definitely wouldn't have a car anymore. <laughs> Almost sounds like he's speaking from experience. Could be. We'll find out. At, if there's uh, anybody I know we'll who would out. fight a chicken, Tommy, Tommy might be on that list. I mean, you you fought a what was that? A goose. Goose. You so remember that story? I heard it's a great story. It's one of my best stories. If you want to support us, so we bring you more content like this. Maybe they don't. Oh. Maybe they don't. But you know, this was fun. I can't yeah. imagine if you didn't think this was fun, you're probably not watching or listening to the rest of our stuff. So I'm gonna I'm gonna assume the best. Assume the win. Yeah, yeah. Number of ways you can help us out: reviews. We talked about reviews. Apple Podcasts, Facebook, Google, and maybe win a free gift certificate. And hopefully, to... you win a free gift certificate. It'll only take you a couple minutes. Yep, we appreciate it. We've also got all the stuff at whistlekick.com. You can use the code podcast15, see 15% on a shirt or what else is over there? Mugs. There's a bunch of cool stuff. Hats, hoodies. Okay. And if you really, 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 really want to help us out, uh, the next level thing is Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash whistlekick is as little as two bucks a month. You step up, we're throwing you bonus exclusive, all exclusive audio video, book drafts, program drafts, private training with me. Like there's so much stuff in there as options. Check it out. There's no obligation to check it out. It's not like you got to sign up and then we show you what your options are. No, you can see all the options before you sign up. If you want to get a hold of us, Jeremy at Whistlekick.com, Andrew at Whistlekick, Martial Arts Radio.com. Our social media is at Whistlekick. And we're done. One Thanks last for comment. for Q&A. Okay, yeah. Uh, Tommy says we need to remind him and he will tell us the skunk story. Okay. So we got to remember. Skunk story. Skunk story. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Until next time, train, train hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.